Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ethan, uh, and today we're going to be talking about reassembling the beatbox into the solid chassis. Uh, as some of you may know, uh, the solid chassis uh, pre-order has dropped, uh, and a lot of you guys own a beatbox that's currently in use, uh, and you're wondering if you can disassemble this and reassemble it into the solid chassis. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, it should take about an hour, maybe a little over. I've never officially timed myself on this process, so we will time myself today to see how long it takes. Uh, I'm aiming at an hour, so let's see how it goes. Uh, before that, let's take a look at the content of the solid chassis. So, you got the top plate. This uh, foam insert comes with uh, some of the support pieces. Got the aluminum standoffs. We got some additional foot pads because I understand a lot of people are going to be uh, understand a lot of people are going to be transferring uh, contents from the beatbox to the solid chassis, and the foot pads on the beatbox are kind of not going to be easy to reuse, so we included some additional foot pads and uh, lots of other screws. Now the screws are all individually packed by kind. One thing to keep in mind is this time we did not include any additional screws, so if you lose a screw, you're kind of screwed. So let's just, uh, you know, be a little more mindful this time. Are all screws and remove this this insert and you see these uh, clear acrylic pieces that. should be five pieces in total That's the entire content of the solid case. Now, the top plate that comes with the solid case is has got like a slightly matted finish, uh, but this is kind of not seasoned enough for me. So here we have a another top plate that I took a random orbit sander, put on a hundred grit uh, sandpaper uh, to go over this entire top surface and. Uh, this is a lot more, you know, matted and scratched up now, uh, and uh, I think this gives a, a lot more of a rustic uh, feel. So we're going to be using this custom piece from myself instead. When it comes to the reassembly, we did include a uh, small screwdriver with the base beatbox kit. You can finish this assembly just with this uh, included screwdriver, but obviously uh, this thing is cheap. Uh, it's not gonna you know, be the optimal tool to do this job with, especially when I'm timing myself. So, uh, here I got this uh, iFixit toolkit, not sponsored by the way, that this is gonna be a lot more efficient in completing this job. So, we're going to be cheating a little bit. So first of all, I probably start from the top of the beatbox, uh, and we'll remove all these cables from the brain board. Uh, the classic technique to use here is basically uh, just Yanking them out, literally. Uh, what you want to do is hold on to this bottom part of the cable right here and just pull them out. Now this board is removed. And let's go over, let's go over to the top buttons. Uh, it will be a lot easier to remove these top buttons if you just discard the foam insert uh, support. So if you don't really care about reusing this box anymore, uh, you can kind of just rip this whole entire thing out. Uh, this foam support is glued on in a few spots, so you can kind of just feel it around. And Remove the entire thing this way.
now you have access to all these little wings on every single button. So just pinch on, let me see it, pinch on the wings, push them in a little bit, and kind of just wiggle them out. Now that's one button. Now if you're a little more destructive, I feel like you can probably just cut open this entire <laughs> top plate uh, if you wanted to. That'd probably be a lot easier, but not my style. Now, you want to be a little softer uh, when you're pinching the wings on the buttons because if you go a little too sudden, uh, they can break. Although, as you can see, you should be able to pinch them to the sides of the hole without breaking the wings. So, But just be a little careful. And if you do break a wing, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it'll still go in the solid case just fine. I kind of don't like how this uh, beatbox has all the small buttons hooked up the opposite way. So I'm going to fix all these. Uh, I'm going to be wasting some time here, but this is how confident I am about this process. Okay. That took probably a minute. Uh, and let's remove these top boards. Uh, we'll leave all these cables intact uh, so we don't have to do this again. You know, huge time save. Remove these knob caps. And I'm gonna remove these nuts just with my fingers. This one's all a little tight, so we'll cheat again. Some sort of a tool. Make sure you don't lose any of these screws, right? Because uh, you're gonna be using these again on the solid case. So. Okay, now let's do some of the fun stuff. Let's put all these to the top plate of the solid chassis. Before we do that, we'll install the support pieces onto the solid chassis. So, grab all these supports. Grab the five flathead screws from the solid case. Okay, grab them too. So grab all these flathead screws and put them through the five holes in the middle of the top plate. So we got those through. Now turn this around. Uh, try not to have any of these screws fall out. There we go. And grab the support piece. So first of all, the support pieces come in two kinds. Uh, one of them has, well, two of them have a pillar in the middle. And then the other four's got pillars on the side. So we'll grab the ones with the pillars in the middle first. And we'll install one of them. We'll grab two of the other pieces. And we'll install them like that. And we'll grab the one with a hole in the middle. Install it like that. Okay, so now we're gonna grab one of the M3 nuts. And install it to the middle. And this holds all the other support pieces so that this operation is a lot easier going forward.
pick the other two up. Some of the screws are gonna fall out. Actually, all of them did. <laughs> Anyways. An easy way to screw these in is, you know, like this beatbox uh, base kit. kit. Uh, we've talked about these techniques there, but it's to hold the nut with one finger on the other end and work the screws in. That way it's tightened. And make sure the supports do line up with these grooves that we left on the bottom of the top plate. Okay, so now that these screws are in, we'll do the little bores first. So we'll do the knot board. Oh, also kind of an afterthought, if you want to do any customization to the top plate, you probably want to do that uh, before any of these parts are installed because uh, it'd be a clean, flat surface. So if you want to put like, you know, stickers on and stuff like that, it'd be a lot easier uh, without all these parts. So, you might want to do that first. Uh, for the joystick board, these screw holes are very small because uh, these screws are really small, so we didn't want to create a possibility for these to, you know, go through entirely. So this is going to fit just right. You might have to force it in a little bit, but it should fit for the most part. joystick board um, make sure that the was it the port on the joystick board faces the opposite direction as the ports from uh, the knot board uh, like you did before hold this here we'll screw these in and uh, remember uh, to not screw these screws all the way in first, just kind of have them secured in place first. Alright, and then push these out so that the standoffs are flush with the faceplate. And then now you can tighten all these up. Alright, that's in. buttons next so as I like to do actually no we'll do the board first we'll get the board in uh, if you remember just follow the direction from left to right to the top there we go and then I like to do the buttons row by row uh, that way it's a lot harder to uh, have the cables tangled. So, same deal. We'll just push it in. Um, at the bottom of the top plate, we do have these little grooves for the button wings to fit into. Um, you can't respect the grooves, uh, you don't really have to. Uh, I do like to do this because uh, they stay in place a lot better. So. You can kind of help it out by squeezing all the wings on the sides a little bit. And obviously, everything's kind of tangled up on the side, so I'll be wasting a little time there. 
what cables do naturally. So now the top plate is finished. We'll lay that to the side, we'll need that later. Uh, let's get the feet box here. Alright, let's start removing stuff. Disconnect the battery. I like to do the speakers first, so I can hold on to the technique is again uh, holding on to the hexagonal nut on this side. screw the screw from the other side. And you can remove the speakers by pinching on the tab over here. Remove that cable like that. charging port next. So, same thing, pinch the tab, charging port comes out. It's easier to pinch, you know, the nut here and just kind of twist the entire charging port around from the other side. Right. Now that's out. Now we'll remove this knob. battery in a little bit. Let's look at these uh, side panels. Uh, we'll do the speaker one first. Uh, this is actually gonna be a little easier than putting together your beatbox for the first time because all the side panels are separate so you can kind of you know do like one panel first. Uh, you, you'll see what I mean. So all the panels come with a little protective uh, film on the outside uh, so remove all that. I know uh, people like this step a lot because it's satisfying and we got like a ton of these steps so prepare to be uh, oddly satisfied. And I guess if you really want to, you can probably leave all these on too, kind of like uh, what my grandma does to all our uh, TV remotes. But I don't like it personally. Okay, so this is the speaker panel. Now, you can grab the speaker cups. Uh, make sure you have it on the right side. So I had on the wrong side. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. All right. So this is the right side. Once again, we'll remove these uh, protective layers. Okay, so there kind of is like a specific way that this top plate fits in, or I mean the the bottom plate is oriented, right? So 
it's not entirely the same, both of these sides. So first of all, first of all you have to test if um, you're on the right side. So the way you do that is fit the speaker panel on. And you can see how this is not symmetric. So turn this around. Put this back in and see how now it's centered. So this is the correct orientation. All right, so now that we know that, let's take the foot pads. Put them on. There we go. Put this on. Just like the first time, we'll... this is a little more difficult. Two more. Okay. So, just like the first time around, uh, do the bottom two screws first. But don't go all the way, right? Leave a little. Leave a little uh, clearance. And then we can do the top two. And chances are, just like me, your speaker plate might have fallen out a little bit. So squeeze those back. Now tighten them all the way up. All right, now that's in place. And we'll do the battery next. Uh, this part, we didn't actually include a uh, additional uh, tape for the battery because uh, there's no way you're going, going to be uh, removing this uh, existing tape cleanly anyways so all right take that off uh, there should be enough like stickiness on the existing tape for you to put this on to the solid case but if there's not you can always get some double-sided tape That's stuck on. Plug in the battery. Let's see if it turns on. It does. We're good. All right, now uh, let's do the standoffs. All right, so take all the standoffs out and take the shortest four screws. They're included in the solid chassis package. Alright, now stand this up. Put the standoffs in. And tighten these all the way. contrary to every single other step that we've been doing.
some of these might be a little more difficult to, you know, screw in all the way. Um, it's fine though. Um, we'll retighten these at the end, but try to get them as tight as possible. This stuff. Pro tip, we'll put on the top plate first. All right, this might seem crazy, but you'll see. We'll connect these cables. Grab the last four screws that are left. Two of these are really long, and two of them are shorter. Fine. There we go. How are we doing on time? We can probably do it. Okay, so put the shorter ones in the bottom two holes of the beat box and put the longer ones on the top two holes of the beat box. So, like that. And screw these in, not all the way. In fact, like very little. Just kind of have them in the standoff. Right? Like literally do not screw these any further than having them biting into the standoffs. Alright, now that they're kind of in place, align the speaker plate with the notches on the top board, top plate, whatever it's called. Uh, so that's good to go. And grab all the side panels. So the reason why we put the top place, the top plate in first is uh, because if we don't do that, these side plates are gonna have a lot harder of a time to stay in place when you put the top plate on. So now what we do is because there's you know a certain amount of clearance on the top plate, we can pop these side plates in from the side in an angle. So we'll pop this one in like that and then we'll lift the top plate up a little bit. This in. This is actually not in all the way, so we'll loosen that a little bit and see how that's in now. Four of these plates are in. So while it's still fresh and hot, we'll tighten these four screws down. And sometimes these side panels are gonna wanna pop out. So just try to make sure that when you screw these uh four corners down, uh, all the side panels are in place. We'll kind of 
go over to bottom to make sure that these are all in. Sometimes, if you really want to make sure that things are tightened, you can take two screwdrivers. Now I know this is a, some luxury that only a select few of us uh, handy people can uh, experience. But anyways, that's it. The beatbox is assembled in the solid case. Let's turn this on. Lights come up. Uh, yeah, this works. So, all in all, I think uh, the total record time is a little over an hour, but I also talked for like five minutes in the beginning. So I think we're right on the money on this one. Um, uh, but yeah, this is the, the solid chassis add-on for the beatbox. And as you can see, it's totally possible to transfer the contents of your uh, base beatbox into this solid case. So uh, pre-orders open. Uh, first batch of the solid case should come in somewhere around mid to late December. Uh, we don't have that much of an inventory outside of our Kickstarter Indiegogo uh, backer orders. So make sure you pre-order a unit uh, and get one locked in uh, if you want to guarantee a unit. S that's about it. Uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.